Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back. This video we are going to be talking about if statements. If statements are one of the first control flow structures. And we're going to begin into all that goodness, but just to start out, we're going to start with the if statement. Before we dive in, I wanted to say thank you to Dev Mountain, our sponsor of this series. Dev Mountain is a pretty legit boot camp where you can get everything you need to know about JavaScript web development and use that in the context of real world problems to get a job in the industry. So if you're looking for a pretty solid class to help you go from complete newbie to expert <laughs> and to get a job in the industry, check out Dev Mountain. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. Mention I sent you and they'll give you $250 off. All right, now let's get started with if statements. So the way an if statement works, it's going to take a section of code and only execute it if some condition evaluates to true. So that's a lot of jargon. So let's just go through an example. In this situation, we're going to get the name from the user. And then what we can do is we can we can say if, and then inside of parentheses, this is where the condition is going to go. But then we're also going to have a set of curly braces. So this is the general structure for an if statement. If you guys have done any programming before, you've probably seen this, it's nothing too crazy. So in here is where we put an expression. <laughs> really you gotta put that in there. In here is where we put an expression. An expression evaluates to a value. In this situation, it's going to evaluate to either true or false. If it's true, the stuff inside of these curly braces, this code block will be executed. If it's false, then it's just going to skip right over it. So we could say that our condition is that name has to equal Caleb. Now this might be interesting and new to you. We're using three equal signs. This is known as the identity operator. You may also hear strict equality. And what exactly do I mean by strict? Well. What this is going to do is not only compare the, the value, but also the data type. So what exactly does that mean? Well, if you had the value five and the value five, these both represent the same thing, but they're in a different data type. This one here is a number and this one here is a string. When you use the strict equality, these are not considered the same thing. This is in contrast to using two equal signs, which will do coercion or data type conversion behind the scenes and try to see if things contain the same value. So my recommendation is to always use the triple equals, the strict equality operator. It's safer, it's more predictable, and it's overall just better. When you use the double equals, you have to memorize a bunch of rules on how data types are converted, or you always have to reference a chart. It just makes it a little bit more error prone. So now that we get the basics, we can go in here and execute some code. So we can say, welcome, do a refresh, say our name is Caleb with a capital C, and it says welcome. If we run the same thing again and type something else, such as Caleb with a lowercase c, it doesn't execute. An extension of this is to add an else clause, which will execute if the condition is evaluated to false. So in this situation, when we type in a name that's not Caleb with a capital C, it'll say you are not welcome. There is a third variation, the if else if, which allows us to do another comparison in another section. So for example, I could say, I can go in here and say else if, put another condition, and another code block. So the final structure will look like this, and we could say name is equal to Sally. In this situation, we might say something else. Close enough. All right, do a refresh. Now if we say Sally, it'll say welcome Sally. You can think of the else clause as a catch all. So the if one will get Caleb, the else if will get Sally, and then if anyone else, you just go to the else. The else is not required, you could remove that and just accept Caleb or Sally. So that is your introduction to the if, else if, and else. It's pretty simple stuff. It may take some time to get used to it. And pretty soon we're gonna be talking about different things you can use here just besides the strict equality. There's all kinds of different stuff you can do. You can make really complex conditionals and make things a little bit more exciting. So I'm looking forward to the upcoming content. I hope you guys are as well. Be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed this series and I'll see you in the next one.